respected beloved brothers and sisters one of the most easiest things for an individual to gain into their heart which is also the maqsad and the maqsud and the purpose of us living is taqwa it is very very easy to get taqwa in your heart and without taqwa nothing can occur the problem is not of getting taqwa in your heart but the problem is of maintaining that taqwa in your heart you will listen to a lecture listen to a recitation of the quran read a passage from a book read some quran read a hadith of rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam and your heart will tremble and your heart will shiver and your heart will shake and that feeling of taqwa will engulf you goosebumps will come upon you your hair will begin to rise off your hands the difficulty is not in getting the taqwa but the difficulty is in maintaining that taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu Allah says oh you believe this ya ayyuha alladheena amanu comes in the Quran about 88 times Abdullah bin Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also known as the Mufassir of the Ummah known as the Hibar of the Ummah known as the Mufti of the Ummah he was asked give us some advice and he said my advice to you is that wherever in the Kitab of Allah Allah Rabbul Alameen says Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu Make sure your ears perk up Make sure you're paying attention For since the time of Adam alayhi salatu wassalam Till the last man From Hawa alayhi salatu wassalam Till the last woman The khitab of Allah The direction of Allah The communication of Allah the focus of Allah is specifically upon you and the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So whenever Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in the Quran, pay attention because he's directly speaking to you. This is like someone comes and directly talks to you, some elderly person, the Imam, the Shaykh, the council member, the president, the king, comes and directly speaks to you. You feel humbled. Your boss at work directly calls you and says, Hey, Khalid, come here. O oh, Mahmoud, come here. You feel honored. Rabbul Alameen is saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Pay attention, I'm talking to you right now. So Allah says, Ittaqullah, have taqwa. Is that not the purpose? Is that not what we're supposed to be doing? But Allah doesn't stop there. He says, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ Shape and cultivate the surroundings and the friends that you have around you. Because getting that taqwa in your heart is simple. Maintaining that taqwa is difficult. And if you want to have maintenance of your taqwa, then make sure the people around you are also muttaqeen. Make sure they're on the same they're on the same page. Miguel de Cervantes says, "Tell me thy friends, and I shall tell thee who thou art." You can tell an individual by the people they hang around. Suhbat is very important. The Sahaba is one Allah alayhi majma'in was Sahaba. 
They were Sa'imin. They were Musalleen. They were Mutasaddiqeen. They were Sadiqeen. They were Shuhada. They were Mujahideen. They were Ulama. They were Fuqaha. They were every single thing but Allah Rabbul Alameen. When He wanted to classify them, and when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to classify them, the terminology used was Sahabi from the word Sahaba. At that time, it was not seen how much ibadah they did. Some of them didn't even pray a salah. Yasir radiallahu radhi anhu and Sumayya radiallahu anha, the first two shaheeds of Islam, they prayed no salah. Salah was not even wajib at that time. They never gave a single zakat. The hadith in Abu Dawood, Sahabi comes, Ya Rasulullah, bring Iman, then go straight out into the path of Allah and becomes a shaheed. وَمَا صَلَّى صَلَاةً وَاحِدًا وَلَا يتصدق. He didn't give any salah, didn't give any sadaqah, no zakat, no hajj, no fast. But he's still a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Why? It's because he had the suhbah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Handala radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, one day he was sitting down, and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes to visit him. This shows that our friends should be people who are righteous. Bring, look at the family members around that your children is hanging around with. The one that he's playing with at basketball. The one he is going out with. Not only is, do you have to see how that kid is, but look at how the parents of that child is. Today you and I will micromanage the children. We will look at where my children hangs out with. Who is he talking to? Who is she talking to? But seldom do we look above that. Do we forge bonds with their parents? And we bo forge bonds with their family. It's because an individual will go home and be cultured and colored by the people who are at home. And if they are coloring them with the color other than the color of Allah, Sibghat Allah, Waman Ahsun Min Allah, Sibghat. Allah says the color of Allah, meaning that they are being embellished or they're being involved in taqwa and they're being involved in beginning close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will keep your child on the right path but if they go home and the mahal and the environment around that person is not something that is conducive towards Allah and Rabbul Alameen it will deter them away so number one the community that is around you, the people around you, solidify them. I know there's many people in the crowd that are not Urdu speaking, but in the Urdu language, there is a word that you call an enemy, which is Dushman. Call an enemy, Dushman. Four letters, Da, Sheen, Na, Beem, Noon. So there's a little acronym we make out of it. That what are the four enemies of humans? Number one, dal for dunya. The dunya is the first enemy of an individual. Wallah al-Azim, you'll see a janazah, you'll see a dead person in front of you, and you will start thinking about the akhirah. And you will be engulfed and you'll say, Ya Allah, I have to change my life. I want you to do tawbah, I want you to do istighfar. But just walk through a mall. Don't buy anything. Just walk through the mall and wallahi that feeling will leave your heart. Just by being in, ar around the dunya. Today subhanAllah the dunya is in our hands. We go, out, we go online, Facebook and all we see we're in, this, we're in the era of instant gratification. Where we see things every moment. On Instagram you see, oh I need to buy that makeup. We buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't even like. 